Hello, all you rabid Lions fans, and welcome to Lions on the Prowl. News, rumors, and debates from the fans' perspective. Here's Jim and Tim. Hello, all you Lions fans. Welcome to Lions on the Prowl. This is episode number 62. Marcus has the week off, and so we welcome in Maniac Tim. Yes, good to be back, Jim. Thank you. And I'm always happy to talk about my Detroit Lions. Yep, that's absolutely the truth. We were supposed to have Mike Rothstein on from ESPN today, but something had come up. Um, We're hoping to get him in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that. The time and date to be determined. Okay, also this week, we're starting out with our shout-outs like we do every week. And Tim, who who do you have a shout-out for this week? Okay, uh, Ricky from work, Tim Reardon from work, um, Colt from work, Brian from work, and also a shout-out to my uh, nephew, Michael, who is celebrating the birth of his first son. Oh, wow, that's cool. And I have a celebration, too. That's awesome. So I want to give a shout out to Terrence Reith and Lexus Knowles on their engagement. And we hope you have a wonderful engagement part of your life and then a wonderful life together after you do get married. But I just wanted to put that out there to everybody. Congratulations, Terrence and Lexus. Also, my shout outs go to Dare Goes Mobby. I watch him religiously. Number one, he knows what he's talking about. Number two, he's really hilarious. I mean, Love the guy, to be honest. Okay, so Everything King, another guy on YouTube that's a really good information guy, and uh, we recommend you watch both of those uh, YouTube channels. Also, Dose of Dion, he comes out with videos. He, like, cranks out videos, like, mad. It's crazy. It's, like, three a day or something like this. He's constantly. In fact, I just got an update on my phone (laughs) just, like, a couple minutes ago that he had just put another video up, so I haven't seen it yet, but I will. Maybe we, we got to hire him. <laughs> we got to hire <laughs> yeah. him. Yeah, somebody's got to do video for yep. us, so why not? So I also a special shout-out to Tammy, um, Carrie, Shannon, Beth from work, Rachel from work, Thomas and Brianna from work. I got a lot from work, too, don't I? Yep. Brendan, see where we both live. Rob, <laughs> Kim Possible! And I try to say that like that. And uh, Leslie, who does our voiceover work for us, and we really appreciate her. So... Right after the break, we're going to go into our transactions. But right now, these messages. Lions on the Prowl is currently seeking sponsors for the show. If your business would like to reach our audience, please email lionsontheprowl14 at gmail.com. Have you tried everything to lose weight? Are you still looking for that one thing that is finally going to work? then contact Tammy about how you can lose weight, increase energy, and gain tons of overall health benefits. It's safe, affordable, and so, so easy with just two capsules twice a day. She can be reached at connect.fitturtle.life. That URL again is connect.fitturtle.life. Do it today. Hello, Lions fans. Would you like to support the continuation of this show? Become a patron. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash Lions on the Prowl. Thank you for supporting our mission to give you Lions news and rumors from the fans' perspective. Yeah, and thank you for all those things. It does help the show. And we're going to go into our transactions now, so stay tuned. Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Make it move. And the Lions were making million-dollar moves this week. Oh, my goodness. Lions signed former Pro Bowl defensive tackle Mike Daniels from the Green Bay Packers, and that's a double good thing for us. Yep, stowed one away from Green Bay, and now he plays for us. My God. I cannot hide my hatred for the Packers. Mm -hmm. I am so sorry if you're a Packers fan because I I do hate your team. Right. I, I do. And it's not to be a hater. We beat them four times in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we really don't have anything to be that jealous of. We have a Super Bowl or two or three or 17. I can't remember. <laughs> but, <laughs> won the division more times than I would care to, ima- to count. But it just seems like they always get a little helping hand from the mm-hmm. referee. It seems like the league, you know, every time something's wrong, right. they bitch and complain that things get changed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I have a little bit of a, a hatred for them. Yeah, a little bit of, yeah. A little bit. So we get a Pro Bowl in 2017. 
Mike Daniels was a pro bowler mm-hmm. last year. He didn't do very well. No. But he had a foot injury, so only played 10 games, I believe. But anyway, we get a – okay, so I, I don't go by Madden ratings too much, but I did look up his Madden rating, and he's an 87. Mm-hmm. That's good. Snacks is like a 94, 95, wow. something like that. Trey Flowers is also an 87. Mm-hmm. So you look at those three, plus you yeah. add in Deshaun Hand, you add in Aquara, oh, wow. you add in Kennard, who's an edge, and, and maybe Jelani Tabai. And mm-hmm. then you you factor in, you know, Tracy Walker in the box. Right. There's going to be a very – it's going to be very, very difficult yeah. for teams to run on this team. And one of the reasons uh, Michael Daniels came to us was basically because he wanted to work under Patricia's system because he's a defensive genius. And also because he wanted to kick the shit out of the Packers for two weeks. Uh, yes. <laughs> two games every year. <laughs> Let's be honest, mm-hmm. though. Yeah, this but he, probably, did, he did turn yeah. down other offers from other teams and decided to go with the Lions, and I think it is both. Uh, he right. said he did want to play for Matt Patricia, but I do believe he wants to, he wants some revenge on the Packers who cut him right before training camp. Yeah. Uh, how brutal is that? Yeah, but, you know, maybe he wants to go ahead and sack that little bit, uh, <laughs> little uh, guy, uh, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Rogers, you know. Aaron in Rogers. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Yeah. In my neighborhood. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> get out of my neighborhood. Yeah, Get that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, so that's one of the transactions. That's the one I'm happy about. This next one, we cut Theo Riddick. This was not a huge surprise no. to me because I said it on the show. I can't remember how long ago. I think it was three three months ago, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, I think right when we were doing our free right. agency stuff and, and uh, draft stuff. I think I mentioned it then that I thought he was going to be a casualty. And then when we had Ty Johnson, we uh, drafted right. him, I, I thought. Yeah, that there, was it. There's just so many running backs right now that the Lions got, and we know what Theo can do, and he was, you know, was good at what he did. But I, I think we got people that can replace him, and that made him expendable. I mean, I would definitely much rather have Mike Daniels because that helps a position, a position in need. Well, I don't know about need. Um, we've we have a lot of defensive tackles. We right. have, we have good depth there now which is nice but i just wanted to say this theo uh, riddick you probably are listening so we just we wish you well i seen that there was an like uh you were going down in new orleans for right. a meeting but nothing but love I, i'm not kidding i did mention that it probably would happen it's not like we want it to happen but we wish you well uh, and wherever you go mm-hmm. okay um so the Lions are down to Mark Thompson. Right. Who, people forgot about him. Mm-hmm. We signed him in the offseason. So we're down to him, Zach Zenner. Right. We have also Carrion Bags Johnson, or right. Carry On My Wayward Son Johnson. Carry On to the Hospital Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. So anyway... I've got injuries as a, as a topic mm-hmm. this week, and we're talking about this wonderful defensive line. Yes, Trey Flowers, Snacks, mm-hmm. Mike Daniels, yeah, but, you know, Aquara, mm-hmm. and guess what? If they can't, play. most of them aren't playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trey well, Flowers is still out with an mm-hmm. injury. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this, and I, I'm hoping I'm wrong, but it sounds like another Ezekiel Ansa th- situation. Uh, it sounds like another. Remember DeAndre Levy? Yes. Anybody remember DeAndre Levy, linebacker who was walking on the wing of a plane in the oh, off God. season? Yet he couldn't play a game for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same situation. Yeah, get the money, get paid for it, but then not. Perform. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. That no, no. I, I nothing to do with that. What I'm trying to say is the Lions like to keep things from us, mm-hmm. us stupid fans, because they believe it gives them a tactical advantage over the other team. Right. Now, I don't know how the hell that has been working for them over the past, I don't know, 60 years, but doesn't seem to be working all that well, no. guys. <laughs> anyway, so Trey Flowers, they said they held him out of OTAs and all that stuff and voluntary mini camps and all that because, eh, you know, he's got a little nagging injury, had his uh, shoulder thing, and he had surgery. I'm not sure, but I think he did. Yeah. Anyway, so they kept him out of that. Then, amazingly, he shows up on the PUP list, physically unable to perform. It's also called the PUP list. 
Then I get a report that he's not even practicing. He's mm-hmm. not even doing drills. He's doing nothing on the right. sidelines. But are they doing that for precaution because they just don't want him to hurt himself or re-injure what was already been hurt? I don't think so. I think this is another DeAndre Levy situation. Oh, my God. I, I Just watch it carefully because they said, oh, no, Otis, he's fine. He, he's all right. He's got a little nagging, whatever, and, mm-hmm. and we're just going to keep him out precautionary. Okay, I believe you. I don't know why I do because you've lied every other time. But Calvin Johnson. Right. Remember that when he was week to week to week yep. to week Actually, and then he didn't day play, to day didn't play, some... didn't play, mm-hmm. didn't play. Yeah, that and, type of thing. Right. So and... here we are again. Same situation. Mm-hmm. So he he's uh, physically unable to perform. Right. He's not taking part in any drills or one-on-one, anything on the sidelines. So as far as I know, now if anybody uh, does know that he's doing these things, that'd be great. I, I want him to be there. I have this sinking feeling that this injury is going to bother us right through the beginning of the year. I just have this bad feeling. Hopefully you're wrong. I hope I'm And wrong. hopefully if he if it is. But I'm calling attention to yeah. it. Yeah. There's two injuries mm-hmm. right now that I'm concerned about. Right. The first one, Trey Flowers, like mm-hmm. I've been mentioning. Yeah. But the second one's Carry on Johnson. And we were told he was all healed. Oh, well, he's 100%. Mm-hmm. Everything's great. Put on the pads and they hold him out. Right. Why? What? Why? Yeah, why? This is mm-hmm. a new offense. You should be getting every rep you possibly can, especially for, for the day they held him out was the mm-hmm. run heavy day. Oh my God! Yeah, the, the day that they that they um, were emphasizing the run game, and right. he gets held out. Why? Well, will somebody please buy him some calcium pills? Something because there's something wrong there. Something. So anyway, like like I was saying, I think that there is a problem. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping I'm wrong. But I think there's a problem there. Right. I also think, like I said, Trey Flowers, him, Aquara's out. Anybody yes. know that? Anybody knew I, that? Yeah. Romeo mm-hmm. Aquara on the bench. Wow. Um, injury. Okay. So all these players, I mean, Snacks is out. Right. Ashawn Robinson, personal issues. Yes. That doesn't. Mean, they say he's going to be back right away, so that one could be. Romeo Arquara is out. Trey Flowers is out. Darius Slay is out. What mm-hmm. great defense are you talking about? We have all these players out, dude. Right. That's true. And Darius Slay, he was injured at the end of, end of the season last season, too. Yeah. Last year. Yeah, he was He was, He was. was hurt last year, too. Right. So, anyway, back. Uh, I want to go back to Mike Daniels because mm-hmm. I think this is a steal. Yep. He's six foot, 310 pounds. I think it's 310. I can't read it from here. I'm just being honest. <laughs> so anyway, he he has the record for 29 sacks over his career in Green Bay. Wow. That's the Green Bay Packer record. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's, man, I'm telling you, he could be <laughs> a really good three technique right next to Snacks. Yeah. Snacks, space eating. You know, I, I like this. I right. like this combination. Yeah, they they ought to just go ahead and re, rename our 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 defensive line nightmare because that's what it's going to be for the yes. opposing teams running backs. Yeah, I I I have a hard time seeing teams running on this team, mm-hmm. and that is, and the caveat always is, if they're if they're healthy. Excuse right. me, if they're healthy. So anyway. So we get him. I also, I want to talk a little bit about track. I'm going here, there, and everywhere. I really am. Um, but I noticed something. Jeremy Reisman was saying this as well. Yep. Did notice the offense looking better. Yeah. It, it looks crisper. It mm-hmm. looks wrinkles are mm-hmm. in there. Trick plays. Matthew Stafford, I think, caught a touchdown pass. Wow. Hey, so cool. that was <laughs> kind of neat. <laughs> um, I think play action is going to be big mm-hmm. in this offense. To have play action, you have to actually have a successful running game, though. Right. And who knows who that running back is going to be. Right. That's true because mm-hmm. carry on. I mean, hopefully he's not injury prone. But uh, if you look at his college season, his last year in college, he was injured. First year with the line, he was injured. 
So And now it looks like he's still injured. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I don't know that for sure. So I'm just mm-hmm. letting you know, you know, it, it's a concern. It's a big concern right. with me. But the offense, I've noticed, uh, they're doing more crossing routes. Mm-hmm. Which usually wouldn't really be... Uh, did, I didn't think they did that right. many with no. Jim Bob Cooter, but I, I could be wrong. But I, I don't think they did. And one thing I know they didn't do a whole lot mm-hmm. of was motioning people to the right and left hand side. Right. So, they'll, and so pre-play, pre-snap, somebody will come in motion. Right. And what it does is it helps us uh, determine man coverage and zone coverage because mm-hmm. if the guy's man coverage and the guy will you know go with him, Nine times out of ten, uh, not always a key, but yeah, right. it could be a key for our de- our defense, right? Or their our offense for their defense. So, um, I guess this uh, leads me to really think that is this an offense that will finally let Matthew Stafford shine in a way of winning? I don't that, know. I mean, if you I can think go it's ahead, take, and, I think it's going to take some time, right, for this offense to click. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have, I think we do have Galladay back, and right. we do have uh, Marvin Jones, is, I think, is back, mm-hmm. too. We got Amendola. We got Hawkinson. It's looked really, oh, wow. really good. Yeah. He looks like the real He mm-hmm. looks like the real deal there. Mm-hmm. So not that he's going to be Gronk. I don't believe that. But I think he could be a major part of the offense this year. Right. You know, so And also blocking mm-hmm. for both of those tight ends, too. And that's that'll help that right. offensive line that I'm not so fond of. So that's the, that, those are the areas I'm telling you. Those are the areas. I'll yeah. tell you what, if they could get a second corner, mm-hmm. the oh, yeah. corner opposite Darius Slay, the number mm-hmm. two guy, they could get him and they could get a left guard. Right. I think that would be amazing. It would be. And that's going <laughs> to, that would really show, really do a lot for both sides of the ball there. It would. I mean, how, how do you pass against, you know, two shut, shut down, down corners. corners, and then still well, you have Justin you got a, Coleman yeah, too, right? And and then you still got a nightmare to run against. Yep. So it's like, my God, what what did the offense do against a defense? Yeah, like, like Hulk Hogan that? used to say, "What you gonna do, brother?" <laughs> <laughs> and I can't when do that the line so. run. Yeah, run wild on you, huh? When the lines run wild on you. Well, maybe I mean, we're talking about stopping the run, though. I know. I'm just saying, yeah. Okay, give you the beat down. Something. Yes. Something. It's not a wrestling show, but we're, we're trying. So that was my concern about that. Um, more things from training camp. Four linebackers lose are used um, more this year. Mm-hmm. We didn't have the Sam uh, linebacker last year. Right. And we're introducing that this year. Jelani Tavai lines up over just about every position. Jack, Mike. um mm-hmm. Will, I mean, he's lining up everywhere. Yep. I like that. Uh, we learned last week when right. we had the interview with Stephen Sy about mm-hmm. his versatility. And if you haven't, you haven't heard that show, that's a really good show. Go back. That's episode number 61. Yes. The Dave Burkett one also was a very mm-hmm. good one. It's episode yeah. 60. So if you go back, you'll you'll get a couple of really, really good interviews right. there. And, of course, 59, too. Yeah, that was Jeremy mm-hmm. Rice. Yes. It's a very good interview. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's really good, too. Okay, so another thing going on, Golden Tate suspended for four games for violating the NFL substance abuse policy. Yeah, and if you just look at it like that without reading the whole story, you think, man, what? yeah, what's up with what? Golden Tate? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, because it sounds like a really black mm-hmm. mark on his uh, thing. He's appealing it. Right, and I think he should. If you look at the um, his statement and you see why, I mean, heck, if – if the guy's just trying to go at him and his wife is just trying to go ahead and have a kid. That's it. Yeah. And that's, I mean, Hey, who the heck cares if it's uh, some positive, positive test because of that. I mean, come yeah. On. I mean, he released a statement mm-hmm. about what it was, but the one thing that I, that I took away from that was in his statement, he said he went to the NFL. He right. found out it was a banned substance, mm-hmm. went to the NFL and told them, Right. Fessed up right away. Yep. Stand up guy. Stop and what do they do? It. And stop taking it. Yes. And then what do they do? They suspend him anyway. R- right. So he's appealing that. And uh, you know, he should appeal yeah. that. That's and a I, bunch of crap. Be honest mm-hmm. about it. I right. think it's a bunch of crap. I really do. I think uh, Goodell should go ahead and step in and say, hey, listen, drop, you know, go ahead and just. 
I don't drops expect much. Suspend. I mean, I, I don't, don't think I you don't, will, but I'm just saying that that's him. a right thing to do. In my opinion, what's well, the right, right thing to do? It doesn't matter. That I don't think Goodell cares that it's the right thing to do. Oh man, there's so much news this week, especially that D line, and I'm yes. telling you that the. It's going to be crazy. Uh, it's going to be on awesome. Line. It's going to be, I mean, that's, that makes a, I mean, this is going to be a great defensive line. I mean, yeah, how? But is it going to be a great team? Right. So USA Today has us going 3-13. and 13. Right. But this was also before Daniels. Well, it was, but I don't uh, think it makes, uh, right. does it move the needle that much, do you I, think? I don't know. Right. Depending on the health of the team. Too. Mm-hmm. They got us right. going 3-13. and 13. So last year, they had us going 6-10. and 10. Mm-hmm. And on this show, I said that was a bunch of crap. They don't know what they're talking about. This is awful. The national media hates us. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when we went six and ten, we had to eat a little humble pie. Yeah, we did. And so, them saying three and thirteen. Um, there are other outlets that are saying we're not going to be very good. We're the bottom of the NFC North. If this happens, mm-hmm. and I'm just I want to caution everybody because it could. Yeah, it could. And honestly, could. If this happens. Don't fire Quinn. Don't fire Patricia. Right? Because it's just like, unfortunately, it's what the Lions do. Is they go ahead and they hire somebody and they really don't give them the chance to be, to complete the job. I know. They change coaches yeah. more than Tim changes his underwear. Uh, it's really that's terrible. A that's oh. a lie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, leave it to Jim. <laughs> no, they do. Yeah. And I agree with you, though. I was making mm-hmm. a joke. But I agree with you. I think that the Lions can't get out of their own way. I've said this so many right. times. But we have to be patient as fans. Mm-hmm. ESPN has said recently, like this right. week, this last week, mm-hmm. we are four or five years away from a Super Bowl. Wow. Now, where we currently mm-hmm. are projected and where people think we're headed mm-hmm. are two totally different things. A lot of people see a lot of potential in this team. It's just not yet. Right. So my question to you guys, my question to you guys last year when I said that they weren't going to be as good as everybody thought, and I took a lot of crap for that, and then they were worse than I even thought. Right. So my question for everyone out there is... Would you sacrifice four or five more years to get to the Super Bowl? Would you be patient enough with the Lions if they kept Patricia and kept Quinn and let them build out a four or five year plan? I would. I mean, I mean, well, you're like one. It. I, yeah, but but I just gotta give my opinion, right? You know, uh Now, in talking to Dave. Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, Dave uh, Burkett, Detroit yeah. Free Press. It didn't seem like he thought they would. Yeah, when we talked to Jeremy, mm-hmm. he said he thought that they were on the right path, but he right. said they only had a, like a 25% chance. Right, but he but he also said that if, Dave said that if they have another season like they had this year without showing improvement, yeah, that... Uh, That's too quick. That, right. Two years is too quick. Mm-hmm. It just is. And now Quinn's had longer, mm-hmm. but Quinn didn't have his didn't have his coach in. Right. So I'm going to say this is the second year of the Patricia Quinn era. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I think Stafford is tied to these two. Mm-hmm. All right. I think that they all should play out their contracts. Right. At this point, unless Stafford really goes downhill, mm-hmm. and we do have to draft an, a quarterback sooner or later. Yeah. But you guys need to be patient. I know everybody in Lions Nation right now is like, "Oh, they're gonna be thirteen and three, and they're gonna be twelve and four. I mean, eleven and eleven and five at least." Are you kidding me right now? No, they won't. They have a first year offensive coordinator. They don't have a good offensive line. They don't have a really good history of running the ball. And the guy that you're relying on to run the ball is injury prone. Yep, that's true. <laughs> Matthew Stafford yeah. had a really bad year last year. I think he will bounce back. But mm-hmm. who knows? And even though they have gotten a lot of components to make this a winning team, you still got to realize they had a lot to build. Oh, goodness, I mean, yes. it was the defensive line. Yes, was nothing mm-hmm. when they got in here. Nothing, right? 
So, I mean, it, you know, bear with them. I mean, some teams, I mean, yeah, we've seen the uh, the Rams go ahead and change over in one year. but And the Bears. Yeah. So it happens. Right. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen for mm-hmm. most teams that right. way. You know, Cleveland, mm-hmm. another one that's kind of changed quickly. But not right. overnight, but yeah. quickly. Um, but remember, Cleveland, how many years have they been bad, though, in order right. to do this? Exactly. So it, it wasn't, I mean, how many... How many first rounds quarterbacks have Cleveland took in over the last? Oh, game? lots. Yeah, lots. Mm-hmm. So the, here's the thing, fans. This is from a fan. Right. This is from the fans' perspective. I'm just telling you, as a fan, I'm frustrated. Mm-hmm. I'm frustrated. Nine and seven wasn't good enough. And then I'm we frustrated go. that Caldwell got fired. Mm-hmm. And then we go ahead and have six and ten. Right. And I totally understand all of your frustration because I share it. Right. I'm pissed off too. But I want a winner. Right. More than anything, I want us to win. I own a shirt that says, just one before I die. Mm-hmm. Rebuilding since 1957. Right. So, And that's true. basically the way it has been. Mm-hmm. Be patient. Because I think that we're on the right track. Right. And the bad thing is the last thing I thought, the last time I thought we were on the right track was Jim Schwartz. Right. And I believed he was getting the right players. Mm-hmm. I believed he was getting, and he was. They were drafting pretty decently. They were getting the right guys, mm-hmm. you know. Well, Patricia is definitely building the house, the team, the way he wants it built, the way he feels that it's going to be able, the way right. he's going to be successful with his team. Now, uh, I do got one question for you. Like you said, you we got, in your opinion, we got rid of Codwell too quickly. Yes. Now, do you think they they would have won more if they would have kept Codwell last year, or do you think that it would have been still a dismal year? I think they would have won more. Okay. I think there was a lot of um, Caldwell people in the locker room. Yes. That did not like the change. I agree. I also think that there was, um, Matt Patricia came off as very harsh mm-hmm. to the players, where they were so used to, um, having it better, uh, right. I guess you put it that way. Uh, it's a different culture work. Yeah, it's a different coaching philosophy, I guess. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think they might have won more games last year. Right. I think for the future, we have the better person. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that they didn't give him at least another year and another chance. Right. But they wanted their guy. Yeah. And, and this I, is their guy. That Matt Patricia is the guy that they're going to lean right. on to to run this team. And um, b- b- to be honest with you, Bob Quinn has never been a general manager. Nope. And Matt Patricia has never been a head coach. Right. So you have to give him a little bit of a break. Mm-hmm. Our in in Detroit, we don't give people breaks very often. Mm-hmm. We didn't. We just don't. Right. Because they get uh, enough on the team. And broken bones and stuff. Like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> something like bad that. joke. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, th- I mean, we don't. We're not very patient. No, but, and because I understand just, because we've been patient for so yes. long but that then, we can, you know, we can't stand it anymore. Yeah. Then at one time we thought that, well, you got got rid of. We thought, oh yeah, we get rid of Wayne Fonts. Then yeah, it will stop yeah. the mediocrity. Right. The the terrible times of just making mm-hmm. the playoffs and getting beaten every year, or yeah. just winning the division. Mm-hmm. God, we wish we could win a division now. Right, that's true. 25, 26 years without mm-hmm. winning the NFC North. Never won the NFC North. Right. Never won a never won a playoff game since 1991. Yep. So we've done nothing lately. Yeah. So I, all this uh, optimism, I, j- uh-huh. I just don't know where that's coming from. Yeah. I love the fact that we just like signed Mike Daniels. I do too. I do too. That's it it just... might equate to another win. Mm-hmm. It might not. Mm-hmm. Depends on who's healthy. Yep, who's healthy and uh, God. Right now, we got a shitload of yep. injuries, in my opinion. Right. And I don't know if these guys are just you know like Slay and and Snacks. It's just an issue of conditioning or whatever. But they've been out for a while. Right. Now, one thing that I've been getting from you know listening to the media and stuff like that is that oh God, <laughs> that the offense is. Supposed to be, we got to be patient with the offense. Yes. You know, and when you got a quarterback like Matthew Stafford, which is basically an air, air it out guy, he got yep. that arm. Yep. 
you also got the uh, the uh, ability to with the offensive pa- passing game to go ahead and uh, score quickly if you have to. Maybe. Yeah. If I mean, you, they didn't if, show that so right. much last year, but I but, think that was Jim Bob Cooter. But if you have to, I'm just hoping that Matt Patricia is smart enough to go ahead and and decide, okay, don't go away and give up games because you're going to be too patient. You know what I mean? Too patient. I don't know what too, you're talking too about. Too patient. In other words. That makes no sense. Okay. Uh, well, let me try to get it to make sense. Go ahead and take the shot down. Field See, when, when you, you were saying to. be patient, we're being patient with the offense, mm-hmm. meaning it may not run so well at first right. because it's all new. Mm-hmm. I think that Bevel will let him loose a little bit more, but I also think there's going to be a lot of run component right. to it, which I don't mind. I think play action would work really, really well if we mm-hmm. had a running back that could actually run the ball. Right. And hopefully with what we – but, of course, still we have this offensive line, which is questionable, okay? Very. All right. So hopefully with the upgrades that we made in, or that the Lions made in the tight end core, mm-hmm. you know, the blocking tight ends that they brought in, and also right. with the running backs that we got. And, of course, that also depends on carry on being healthy. That's a big issue. What uh, C.J. Anderson can do, and also what Zenner can do. And and you forgot about Ty Johnson. Right. Which you shouldn't. No, I shouldn't. And You're he, right. He's, mm-hmm. he's the one that can break it. Right. Out of that whole group. He's the okay. one guy that can uh, can take it to the house. All right. I well, believe that. Mm-hmm. And and he, he's a change of pace from right. everybody else. So I really see him making the roster and making a little noise if they gave him the ball. You're right. We'll just see. So, uh, who would you rather have as running back, Leclerc Blanc or uh, Anderson? Anderson, by far. I I agree there. Yeah, I mean, he's just younger, mm-hmm. um, so that, that makes a big deal of difference. I don't know how much Leclerc Blanc had in the tank right. uh, left when he, when he played with us. He didn't do terrible, no. but he was nowhere near what we thought he was going to be. Mm-hmm. Make that very, very clear. Um, so, yeah, I think that... Um, C.J. Anderson would be the back if Carrion can't do it. Um, don't sleep on Ty Johnson. Though. Right, yeah. Just and, don't. and Zach Center, I think, would have a lot of carries as well. Right. But uh, let's hope that that doesn't happen. Um, everybody that's pie in the sky is sure hoping that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and I'm, we not all know. So, I'm not so much. We all I'm know that the hopium, hurt. this is the time for the hopium. It's that, time for the if, hopium and yeah. the, um, the blue but, Kool-Aid. Then we 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 Blue need to get glasses. They need to get real. <laughs> you know, and need to get it's real. Get that's real. the that's the hardest thing yeah. for Lions fans. I think is is to look at our right. team objectively, and mm-hmm. we we fall in love with players, right? And we think that these guys are the best guys in the NFL and all this stuff. And and sometimes when you look at other teams, right. you don't you know you see better teams. Mm-hmm. You know, Tim, you often often tell me, right? Why not? Why can't we beat this team? Because they're far superior to us. <laughs> right. I mean, that's just kind of the case in some of these some of these cases, and it bore out last year when we got throttled by Seattle yeah. and Chicago and Minnesota got ten sacks on us in one game. Oh, God, yeah. And that, our offensive line hasn't changed much. We mm-hmm. moved Frank Rag now to center. Yeah, love that move. I guess. Um, and that's his net. That's his position he played in college. Yeah, I think he's better at that mm-hmm. position. So does PFF. They think he's right. going to be. Not only a good and a and a really good center, right. but the best center in the NFL. Yep. Now, uh, I I know we go a lot by PFF ratings. We do. All right. And one one thing we have seen where where we did look at uh, Daniels, uh, his PFF rating dropped quite a bit. Yeah, he was seventy one point yeah. one last year, but mm-hmm. yeah, he was injured. I don't think he was. I think he was injured a lot of the year. I mm-hmm. mean, you have to hear from him on that. But he was 81.1 or something like right. that uh, the next year. And so that, or the year 2017 when he had, um, when and, he had, uh, oh, 81.5, mm-hmm. sorry. When when he had his Pro Bowl season. Right. So we're only one real year removed from him mm-hmm. being a Pro Bowl player. And because of an injury, it's 
really what I believe. Right. And I, I, I think maybe, you know, the reason I brought that up is maybe that's some of the reasons we see where, you know, some of the lines are not as high up there because your PFF rating can trade change year to year depending how, how you do that current year, the year before. Right. And last year everybody mm-hmm. underachieved. I get what you're saying, but I still don't think, that some of these positions, I think some of these positions, like I said, right. are are accurate. Right. Like the offensive line is terrible. Right. If you go by PFF ratings, they're just not very right. good. But uh, what I'm bringing up is, why I'm bringing this up is because Marvin Jones, for one, he had a terrible year last year. Yeah, I uh, he had injuries too. Right. So did I know, Slay. And, Slay had a bad saying, year. But, uh, Stafford I, had a bad mm-hmm. year. And I'm just saying that that affected the ratings. So if we're... And we have used those ratings to compare us against other teams. What I'm just saying, because of their down years, injuries, and stuff like that that we have had, we might even be a better team at some of those positions. Yeah, we might be a better team. Thought. I'm not. I'm not saying we're not. I'm just saying we're not. We're not as good as some of these other teams yet. Right. We just mm-hmm. don't have that talent. Right. And especially on the offensive line. Yeah. I'm I'm not going to argue with that you is there, the one especially. that's the one it's it's curious right. to me how they keep building the defensive line but they just won't build the offensive line. Well, they have tried to and then sometimes Well, Ragnall yeah. they they picked him up. Right. They picked up TJ Lang and mm-hmm. then they picked up Ricky Wagner. Right. Now, Ricky Wagner has not played very well. TJ Lang is mm-hmm. has retired and yeah. he's now the voice of um Lions Radio, so he's oh, cool. a ninety-seven something. I can't remember, but he's uh, one of the voices of Lions Radio now. So that's awesome. I mean, it's right. awesome he stayed around, and, and a lot, a lot of players do. Mm-hmm. And anyway, getting back to this, to, we're going to run out of show here pretty soon. Okay, but, so let's get get into um, what we think for this year again. And you know what, Mike Daniels does move the needle for me mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah, I'm still sticking with seven and nine. I'm, okay. I'm still not giving them an extra win. Mm-hmm. Because of this move, yeah, I really believe they needed to to go out and get an offensive lineman. Mm-hmm. Um, and but, if they do that, now that they, I want to go into one more thing, and hopefully I'll get to that, get to all of this. But one more thing: two players to watch getting cut, okay, or getting released or traded. Mm-hmm. Wiggins, right, left left guard. Right now he's projected as a starter, right, and Jamal Agnew. Believe it or not, wow. There's just a lot of corner depth, mm-hmm. and they don't like – like Theo Riddick was a one-trick pony. He right. basically wasn't a running back. He was kind mm-hmm. of just a running back wide receiver, and every time he was in there, pretty much we right. knew it what he was going to do. Yeah, made Very it predictable. Very predictable. Jamal Agnew is an excellent punt returner. Yes. But he doesn't offer a whole lot more. Right. He's not a great secondary guy. And so with Ty Johnson being mm-hmm. there – um, Danny Amendola has right. also returned kicks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know that he's not expendable. Right. But I yeah. think he makes the team. I, I really didn't think he would make the team, but I, I, I just think that he's so dynamic at that that maybe he does. Yeah. So if you had to put money on it, Jim, would you put money he made it or that he got caught? At cut. this point, I would say he makes it. Okay. And but it's tough because you have mm-hmm. so many defensive backs you can't keep them all right. And there are some good ones. Mm-hmm. So just got to balance it out. The other one, Mike. Uh, the other one, uh, Wiggins. He's he's a three million dollar cut. So if we cut him, we right. get three million dollars back. Mm-hmm. So if Abushi could step up, right? If we had knowledge of an offensive lineman that was better than him mm-hmm. that we could get, I think they would cut him. Right. I think they would. They've experimented with Joe Dahl there recently, Barbie's husband. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Bad joke. Yeah. <clears throat> but Barbie yeah, they, the, they've uh, the experimented with him mm-hmm. on, on over there, and I don't think that's going to be Work anything. It. Tyrone yeah. Crosby has been a little bit right guardish. Mm-hmm. and I kind of like that. Right. He's going to hopefully be the replacement for Ricky Wagner someday. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. But yeah. it's been a long day, mm-hmm. long show. I'm going to wrap it up a little early this week. I'm just really exhausted. I'm yeah. honest about it. 
hopefully next week we will have Mike Rothstein. We're gonna we're gonna try, and if not, then we'll be coming to you next week mm-hmm. um, with another episode episode with a lot of facts, a lot of yep. speculation, and a lot of passion from the Lions uh, fans' perspective. Mm-hmm. So Tim, take us home this okay. week. Okay. Always remember, lines on a prowl. Go lines, one pride. Have a good week. We'll see you next week.